What's up y'all, it's Rob here, Square Wheels. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the one fatal flaw of the AU Car Mark V Tesla style screen for the Infiniti Q50. And I'm gonna tell you what I did to resolve it. Sit tight. Never at ease, I don't know a limit. Chasing a dream, I don't know what sleepers. I got a queen, she lit me to eat it. She ripe like a peach and she snapped me to snip it. Sorry to leave you guys hanging. Uh, I've actually been doing a lot on my Q50. So uh, since the last video, which was the Q's Atlanta meet, uh, I ordered side skirts. I picked up a Krotov uh, tail that I'm gonna DIY paint, um, so stand by for that. I installed bumper sequential turn signals and day running lights, as well as mirror sequential uh, day running lights. And I had my windshield tinted by Shaded Films ATL. Check out the link in the description. Jamari's doing awesome work in the Atlanta area. If you're looking for tint, hit my boy up. He is an artist. Up we go. Okay, we've got a visitor. Okay. Yeah, take by the by. Is he the police? Mommy. All right, get out of here, bud. So this video is specifically for those of us that already have a Tesla style screen, uh, either by AU Car or by Phoenix Automotive installed in their Q50, or I mean, this could even be applicable for any other car also. If you're still on the fence and thinking about getting one of these Tesla screens, check out a couple of my other videos. I'll link them in the description or on one of these cards here, but I go over the installation of the AU Car uh, Tesla style screen for the Infiniti Q50 as well as give a product overview for that. Also word on the street is that the manufacturer of these units is coming out with a new version that's going to have more processor, more memory, and it's going to support open Bluetooth. Now I don't have all the details on it, but if it does live up to all I'm hearing about it, I will be first in line to grab it and review it for the channel. So sit tight for that. In a nutshell, I love the unit from a features perspective. It has pretty much everything I want. It boots up quickly and is immediately usable when I first start the car. It supports wired and wireless CarPlay if you got iPhone, wired and wireless Android Auto if you got an Android device. It works with all the in-touch functions, all my buttons in the center console and the steering wheel work with it completely seamlessly. It's got amp pre-outs. It works great with my aftermarket subwoofer, backup cam, 360 cam, all work. Heated seats and steering wheels are all Gucci. One burning issue I had with this was the responsiveness of the screen. And I talked to many of you offline and in person. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw my Q's Atlanta meet. I was at the Q's Atlanta meet with uh, Boost in Motion. I demoed the screen for a, a handful of you. And I kind of kind of got you guys to play around with it and see if you experienced the same thing. Some of you guys didn't notice um, the kind of lagginess that I've been sensitive to. Uh, some of you did, but I just find it a little sluggish in terms of response. And I will say, be fully transparent with you, I am a technology nerd. I demand the best performance out of any of the products I'm using. I love interacting with products that not only work, but are frictionless. And I will say Apple is really great at this. I'm not a fanboy, but they put the human at the center of all their products, and it really shows in their designs and their interfaces. When, you, when you're clicking around on the iPad, you're not really thinking about the delay, you're just thinking about what you wanna get done and it's not distractingly slow to you. So while we're on the topic of Tesla screens, here's MKBHD's video and he's showcasing the screen on his brand new Tesla Model S Plaid. And you can see that this thing is lightning fast. It's super responsive. Um, you know, it's almost anticipating his touch and you know, it, it acts like an iPad. It, it's, it's really smooth, really slick. And that's what I was missing from my AU car Tesla Mark V screen. So yeah, the one fatal flaw in this is the performance, especially when you're loading multiple apps onto the device and running them simultaneously. But as promised, I found a fix. So I asked around in uh, a lot of the forums that are dedicated to these kind of units and a very common theme started popping up. Sergi firmware. So what is the Sergi firmware? Well, so whether or not you've got a Phoenix automotive unit or an AU car unit, they're all largely the same. They've all got the same processor, the same GPU, the same amount of memory for the most part. 
The firmware is the software that makes the unit run, essentially. It's the all the background processes as well as the user interface that you see and interact with. Now, the firmware that comes on these devices, um, I'm not an expert on this at all, but I'm assuming that they come with a lot of bloatware, a lot of extra stuff, and they weren't written efficiently. So that really negatively impacts the performance and the responsiveness of the screen as you're interacting with it, especially when you start multitasking and running multiple heavier applications in parallel at the same time. So the Sergi firmware uh, seems to be written like hyper efficiently without any of the extra fat. Um, and when I'm interacting with it, it's really snappy. So um, that was the major benefit to me. So I, when I click around, when I'm trying to do anything, when I'm switching between apps, all that stuff is just kind of happening, you know, pretty quickly, especially in comparison to the firmware that came with the unit out of the box. Now, I'm not saying that this is like the actual Tesla screen. I'm not saying it's on par with my iPad because it's still a little laggy if I'm, if I'm being honest. Uh, and again, this could be me being hyper, hyper critical, um, but I still sense a little bit of lag when I'm using it, but it's still worlds better. And I think it's a no brainer, definitely worth the money to get it. So in addition to the performance boosts that you get out of this, there's also some cool features that uh, I'm gonna show you just at a high level. First off is custom um, boot screen as well as custom boot animation. Really cool. I like this one because it kind of feels custom to my car. I do have custom headlights in so I can change the color of them. I, I really think that that's a, a cool addition. But then check this out. So once your screen loads up, you have the ability to customize what car shows up there. So that's actually my car. I'm still working on the, the Photoshop here just to make sure that the edges look really good, but you can customize all the cars. So this tiny one at the bottom too for the HVAC, uh, I'll be able to modify that one also to make it my car that shows up there. It's really easy to do. Uh, you just go into file manager and then you drop the file and make sure that the file name is exactly the same. So you'll see it here you'll just see like different boot logos and then you'll see uh, the different um, images that are your car basically. So you just overwrite them and then restart the device and it'll show up uh, in the theme right there. Also included with this firmware are multiple other themes that you can choose from and uh, customize within the themes themselves. So how do you get the Sergi firmware? Well, this one's a tricky one. So this guy Sergi, I'm pretty sure he's just some guy in Russia that happened to write some awesome firmware for these devices. Now to get a hold of the firmware, you need to find the forum that he's in on Facebook. Then you need to find his profile on Facebook. Then you need to send him a message and you know, it's kind of like a weird disjointed experience, um, but it's definitely legit software. He's definitely a legit guy and he's super helpful. He guided me through the entire process. It was, it was awesome. But I do know that not everybody has Facebook. Not everybody, you know, wants to go through that. So what I did was two things. One, I'm going to link you directly to his profile. So if you just want to send him a message directly and go through it that way, if you've got Facebook, then go through it that way. But I also created a link on my website that will send all of your details directly through to Sergi. So you guys can work back and forth on email one to make it a lot easier for you as you're going through this process. Cause I just want you to get the firmware and be happy with your device. And then two, I'm an analytics guy. I'm a data nerd. So I like knowing how many people I kind of guided to Sergi, uh, how many people are watching my video, all that stuff. I, I just like knowing. So either way, I'm not getting paid. I don't care if you buy the Sergi firmware. I don't care if you are happy with your device as slow as it is, you know, that's on you. I'm just throwing this out there for the people that, you know, are interested in having their device perform as good as it possibly can. So regardless of how you reach out to Sergi. Once you actually complete the transaction and get a hold of the Sergi firmware, 
um, he's gonna send you an email with all the information that you need to install it. So it'll be in an email, it'll have a couple attachments, it'll have a couple videos that kind of guide you through it. So, you know, really good, you know, once you get your hands on the software. In a nutshell, what you're gonna do is install an application, you're going to uh, load the firmware uh, to a USB thumb drive and then plug that USB thumb drive into the USB ports on your Tesla screen. And then reboot the device a couple times with the firmware, install, you know, unplug the USB. It's uh, kind of a, a process to go through, but it's easy. Um, I got it right the first time. There's not really any way to screw it up, but it, it's pretty straightforward. Once you do, then you'll see that you've got uh, a lot of new settings in your user settings menu. You'll also see uh, all those themes that I uh, kind of showed you briefly previously. Um, but the biggest thing is that whole, you know, Achilles heel, the whole thing that was kind of making this device not the awesome device that I thought it would be is resolved. Now the performance is a lot smoother. Now I'm not going to tell you that it's as smooth as my iPad Pro. I'm not going to tell you it's as smooth as the uh, Tesla screen in the actual Tesla, but it is, it is a lot better. It is now no longer distractingly slow, even when you're multitasking or running multiple apps. As always, thanks for checking me out. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. There's bound to be plenty more content. As I said, there's lots of projects going on on my Infinity Q50. Anything you're interested in, anything I made have mention, anything that didn't cover well, let me know down in the comments and I'll be glad to either address you in the comments or address you in a follow-up video. Sit tight, more to come. Thanks y'all.